All right, welcome to Midnight on the Milky Way, a type of intergalactic train game. The about section was kind of um, mysterious, um, ominous, but I do know this is a prequel to a game called Sorry Kara. Sorry Kara is also a type of intergalactic train game, which looks like a lot higher because this is uh, one of the earlier projects here. But um, I want to play this one first because it is a prequel out of curiosity. And then after... Um, you know this video comes out we'll also get to playing the other one as well because i really like this creator style their storytelling is really nice so i just want to play their games <laughs> let's go oh jesus because i could not stop for death he kindly stopped for me the carriage held but just ourselves and immortality it's got fire it's actually nice <laughs> we slowly drove he knew no haste and i had put away my labor and my leisure too for civility we passed the school where children strove at recess in the ring. We passed the fields of grazing grain. We passed the... the uh, it was... Embarrassing. I can't remember. Unfinished things are the worst. Well, I'm sure I remember how it ends. Would you like me to tell you? Yes. Well, in the end... Soft chugging of train tracks wake me up something important was being said to me i can't seem to think of what it was i have a suitcase in my lap and a hat on my head and i'm, I'm sitting in emptiness and besides that besides that ah, it's empty it's like all of my thoughts have fallen out this is a special sort of trouble it must have been somebody once i had to be how did i end up this way where is this train going I'm a person made of nothing. When chasing my thoughts, I only find emptiness too. There's one thing pulling me down to reality. That's the gentle sound of train tracks. Who are you? A drink with danger. There's no use sitting and doing nothing. Without m much thought, I decide to wander wherever the next, whatever the next room is. From the inside, I hear life. That's where I'll find answer, surely. And it looks to be a barn. As a sound of clinking glasses and soft humming. That's the type of person you want to see at a bar. There's just an imposing devil bent over his drink. Hey there, fog face. The voice comes out low and gravelly. He gives the slight scent of smoke. That's got a new feeling. That feeling is intimidation. Shaking in your boots. Oh, quaint. But there's not much I can do for a fog face like you. Not anymore. Let's have a sit down. How about that? Dot, dot, dot. Uh, what is this? Nothing is coming out. My mouth. My mouth is... My hands shoot up to my face in panic. Nothing. Nothing. It's not the fear killing my voice. I simply have no mouth at all. It's gone. No eyes, no nose. Everywhere my hands are met emptiness. Now calm down there, chickadee. You're ruining my peace. If I could cry out, I would. I'd shout at the top of my lungs, but it's all gone. What happened to me? Where am I? And who... Enough out of you. The man's deep voice rips me out of my panic. He returns to his drink. Now, you can sit there fretting over your pretty little face, twisting yourself to pieces. Or you can man up and have a drink. It's a perfect night for a gin and conversation. Not that you'll be doing much conversating. I suppose he has a point. This annoys me greatly. I take a seat next to him in defeat. There we go. We're the only ones in the car. There isn't even a bartender. What luck. To have a bartender is the devil who slides me a glass and pours. Can I, can I drink this? Got this from behind the counter. It don't taste too bad, I'd say. The name's Huffy, by the way. Huffy the Knife. If I could respond, I realize I haven't got anything to respond with. Because even my name is gone. I look down to my drink. Looking back at me is a dark fog. That's me. This train. Do you know how you got on it? I weakly shake my head. Mm. Maybe you're lucky. Forgetting so easy. Not everyone gets that luxury. But by your stand up. Looks like looks by your stand up looks, you seem like you got some things to go back good things to go back to. Blah, sorry. My stop is coming in due time. If you don't mind, I'd like to do some conversating. 
Dev takes a soul slip from his glass. No, I don't want to be too self appreciative, but I'd say I can read people pretty hard. When I see a fog face like you, I see somebody who gets muddy too fast. That's no good, especially where I'm from. Where I'm from, it's best not to think too hard about nothing. I'm too bad to follow my own rules, Fogface. Maybe that's why we're sharing a drink like this. If that's the case, I got lucky after all. You must not remember how you got here, but I do. I was finishing up some work. The kinds that's supposed to be, supposed to go down easy. Boss gave me the picture. The job was some guy who was your height, but skinnier. I says, he got me clipping a bookworm? I guess he was clever with money in some way. Causing some upset with fellas, it's causing something upset with fellas in the high places. This guy's the whole thing. Nothing to worry about, of course, because by looking at him, I could tell I'd begin drinks before dark. So I head out into town, thinking of how I'm going to do this. The snow was clear and crisp, so it made for good thinking. A guy that bill don't have muscles to fight back, but he sure do got the brains. If I was him, with all those smarts and all that money, I'd make sure my back was being watched. I get a few guys. I keep a cutter on me. If I was gonna, it was gonna be a good night. I felt he wasn't so hard to find. He looked like a coat rack running around in that new suit. He must have bought with the swiped cash. If he didn't get so greedy for that suit, maybe we wouldn't have waltz like we did. Although, I was plenty all right with waltzing. I walked right into his trap. I sometimes like to do that, just get myself giddy. I knew that he'd wait at the back of the alley, and there'd be maybe two guys behind me, and we'd have a real good waltz, just for the fun of it. It's a cliche, but I'm a romantic. And the skinny fellow who led me to this wonderful night, why, I ought to give him a sloppy kiss on the lips for showing me such a good time. You wouldn't get it. You're a stand-up guy. It's better if you don't. But there was a day back then that I learned to find joy in what I do. I could hear the sweet sound of knives coming out of sheaths behind me. That only got me more excited. You can't help but think, are they gonna swing or stab? Is the blade lead new is the blade newly sharpened or has it got the wear on it? Are they the calculation sword or are they full of fire? How long will this moment be? When you see the fight in the other man's eyes, you know it'll be something to savior. I push my blade right into the side of the first grunt. It goes in easy like it's hot through butter. He goes down just in time for the other fella to jump out, swinging some iron pipe. I take that pipe with my free hand and... Crack. He sent flying into the frost. Got my blood going, but it was nothing too bad. Just... It just wasn't easy and... It just wasn't good enough, you see. There's no passion. And then I turn around. It was a skinny fella I was sent to chip off. I'm afraid a weakness of mine is that I'm not too keen with faces. I'm better seeing people with how they carry themselves. And this coat rack... Well, I don't remember his face, but I sure as hell remember his quick step and the hot feeling in my chest when his knife pierced it through. Ooh. You weren't prepared. When you see a man's eyes and you see the fight in him, you can tell if they're fighting for their life or if they're fighting for someone else. Those were the eyes of someone who didn't care for his life. He was fighting because he liked it. I took my own knife, slick with blood, and gave him a good thrust to the side. As much spark as he had, it couldn't keep him standing. So I watched him gas like a fish into the snow. I could have done anything. Maybe I'd be a clean cut fella in another life, or maybe I'll go back into the dirty business. But as I think, no matter how many times I get reborn, I'll remember that heat. I felt when that coat rack of a runt stuck me. Oh, a good one in the heart. Sounds strange in a line of business where you shouldn't be thinking about these things, but it felt like I was coming home. And one way or another, I was on this tree. Buffy, I know it don't make much sense, but that's the way things happened. I'm at a loss for words. Well, me. <laughs> Man, I'm drinking with this dangerous. The overwhelming urge to run takes me. I don't ex exact do good or like you to get it. For you people, your life is all cut out for you. I didn't try to get into this business. Or like the business got into me. Why are you letting business get in you, bro? Some folks, we don't get to start off so clean. Oh, crap. 
Oh, I said something about my mouse. Actually, oh, my mouse cursor. That's ah, fine. I can't see now. Somebody, that's all right, fog face. Oh, there you go. That's all right, fog face. I can read you plenty fine. You won't have to stick with me much longer now. Have you put down his drink? I think this is where I'll be leaving. No worries. I won't ask for another round. I'm not that soft. This line of business don't have much in the ways of close relations. I'll give you a present. Carefully, I've removed his mask and placed it on the bar counter. But he turns too quick for me to see. Since I'm here, maybe I'll turn over a new leaf. Think of that. Huffy getting clean cut. If you're lucky, we won't meet again. Huffy walks away. I didn't touch my drink at all. I don't think I could drink it, even if I sat a mouth. But it's strange. Even though I'm shaking, even though he smelled like smoke, I think. No, it could be. I get it from the bar. I need to find out where I am. And as much as I feel like I shouldn't, I take the mask that killed left behind. I don't have any regrets, he said, and he left me this. I walk out of the empty bar with hurried footsteps. The rooms I find are empty of life. The only sounds are louder than my thoughts are rhythm are rhythmic, rhythmic chugging of the train and my own panic footsteps. The sensation in my chest grows stronger. Anybody, anybody, I just want to. That's it. Thank God, there's somebody here. I open the door and a figure appears before me. A young man with a knowing grin. I can't tell if I'm completely comforted or suspicious. Can you speak? Oh, I guess so. I couldn't say. I'm caught up by my own surprise. Just before I can make a peep, another sound. Without even thinking, I put a hand up to my mask and give it a sharp whistle. <whistles> oh, that's a good word to have you speak. My ears are met with sound and my fingers feel warm breath. The mask Huffy gave me. He gave me the ability to speak. Awesome guy. That's good. It wouldn't be, it would be trouble if you couldn't. More passengers here have a lot to say. You look like you have a lot to say as well. I hope you're I can. Who are you? What happened to my memory? What happened to my memory? Because Huffy had his. Everyone is a bit forgetful in the beginning. It's only natural. Because the shock of the situation is too much for one person to process. Normally, one would be gathering some flickers about now. He froze his brown deep thoughts. I can't help but feel awkward, waiting for the child to help me. He breaks the silence with a weary sigh. I'm sorry. This is something for you to find. Please understand. Ah, I can't hide my disappointment. Talking to more people may help. Ah, who are you? I'm a passenger, like the rest. But I've been riding longer than most. Shaheed. You can call me Shaheed, fortune boy. I'm about to offer my name when my mind goes blank. I've forgotten that. Something so important. It's gone. Shaheen answers by his station with a decided smile. Please, trust me when I say it gets better. What about this train? <laughs> I too wonder about this train. I can't tell you much. Have you looked outside yet? The view is unlike anything. Other than that, I wouldn't worry. Just keep your tickets close. What do you mean, passengers? Well, we are on a train, so naturally it would have passengers. <laughs> I know what you mean. Everyone here has their own circumstances, dealing with things just as you are. Even that devil fellow, if you can believe that. I'm reminded of the killer's gruesome story. A strange feeling comes crawling back. I push it away. Mm. Please be kind to them, even if they are not so kind to you. I don't remember any tickets. It's surely on your person. Take some time. Take some time that for the, take some time that for that case there. <laughs> a case. I've got a suitcase. For some reason, I can't recall anything that's inside. My name, my suitcase, how I even got here. Payne's face goes unexpectedly solemn. Take care of your ticket. You'll find many a good soul on these tracks, but there are cool ones as well. A good suitcase even tighter. Uh, that's all. Somehow I feel like I learned nothing at all. He's young and polite, but he still irritates me, dancing around the subject like that. Still, the sincerity is there. 
you must have his reasons. You look unsatisfied. I understand. I've been there, being locked away with no clear path. And the more you look, the more you realize you are completely, utterly lost. Do you think you will find what you're looking for? I have to. That's a good answer. Some might call you childish for such simple thinking, but I find it admirable. There's something to respect about people who know what they want. You're speaking to me, but it feels strange, so I'm not really worthy of those words. For now, at least, rest easy. It can be very stressful, coming to terms with all this. This unfamiliar place, alone. But please, don't worry. Just enjoy yourself while you can. And with that, it makes a moment to leave. I'll see you again. In my, f- f- in my feverent question, Shaheen lights up with laughter. <laughs> you sound like a child out there. <laughs> or some long lost lover. By the face, he'll be turning the brightest shade of crimson. <laughs> well, dear lover, I'm afraid I've got my own affairs. Please understand, you're very entertaining. It's just some things must be done by yourself. But I'll visit you when I can, alright? Uh, for some reason, my chest hurts. Jane gives one more glance as offer his condolences and disappears into the next car. He was cool, the fortune boy, Jaheen. Somehow it hurts. I feel compelled to rush after him, begging for a little more time. But that's just embarrassing. Even as the chest pain grows, it would be too childish. The thought of drinking with that killer isn't so attractive, suddenly. Unattractive. Are you already really? A flash from the car window captures my interest. I hadn't thought to look outside yet, but there I see it. Through the window is a vast expanse of stars. The darkness goes deep and the lights fly past, too. Too fast to grasp. Space. This is what space looks like. And the stab in my chest, I know that, too. It's loneliness. Familiar feeling. Hour one. Bright pearls for my darling. For a time, all I could do was take in the seed. The singing feeling of being small, of being trapped, it was all too strange to absorb. I went numb with the shock. What, realistically, can I do? All the way out here without a face or name. Ugh, it's not so stupid, I exclaimed. So with my chest puffed out, I began to explore the cars that I came across them. Each car was filled with empty seats of simple construction. The only real impressiveness coming from the large windows that revealed the stars outside. Slowing slightly, I thought I caught sight of a small planet surrounded by golden rings. Occasionally there would be something like that, or there would be something that I couldn't make sense of, like the sight of a seabird or a school of fish going by. It's too impossible. However, I've never been to space until just now, so maybe fish and birds and things of, occur- and things of that sort are completely common occurrences. What a lovely sight. Yes. It's like nothing else, but even as I stop to stare and wonder, even as I keep my chin held high, it did not help the beating pain caught between my ribs. My disappointment led me to taking a, a, disappointment led me to taking a seat by one of the windows. Out of curiosity, I pressed my ear to the glass. A small, tinkling sound, as if the stars themselves were clicking against each other. Maybe that's just their way of conversation. If I close my eyes and focus enough, Maybe I can catch a few words. Maybe I can understand what they're saying. Maybe I'll learn something. We got a real bum in our boss. It's a freaking cat. Welcome aboard the Gemini 22, value passenger. You've been catnapping for a while. I'm your devoted attendee, Doppler. Doppler, Neko man. It's a furry. <laughs> He's the cat. A real and true talking cat. He's wearing some kind of clean cut uniform, not a whisker out of place. Yep, he doesn't have whiskers. Uh, are these whiskers? Well, if it's a uniform, then it's certainly for this Gemini 22 thing. Oh my god. Sorry, I, I went to get a water. I've definitely voided my whistle. My god. Voice feels much better. I apologize for that. What is it, passenger? It's roots is there. Uh, uh. Sorry. You see, Doppler, I haven't seen another person in some time. I'm a bit confused. Oh, so I take you're trying to sniff out some answers, huh? That's just it. And me 
Mew wants me to help me. Mew, right now feverishly, it was hard to reread. <laughs> Third place greeting, but the prospect of help gets me sad like a puppy. The cat man gives me a taut smile. <laughs> I see. Sure sucks to be Mew. Huh? You see, value passenger, it's not really any of my business. <laughs> this looks like an undertale face. <laughs> Maybe I'm your devoted attendee, but I sure as heck ain't your friend. I'm just here to check for tickets and whatnot. Oh, but me, I got your tickets, for right? I feel the urge to slam my suitcase over that smug feline's head. Instead, I exercise restraints and open it for the first time. Well, at least I remember. Luckily, the first thing I see is a shiny silver ticket. It's goes with a touch and surprisingly weighty. What's well, fine a name, but the only thing I can read are the words Gemini 22, one way. Only a one way. The rest is foreign to me. And Jeep, Wassinger, you sure are taking your time. I'm just making sure it's it, alright? Well, Passenger, it would be a silver color, which is like a shiny ray. And you are longer than a few inches. Shush up, I know. Try to take the smug beast, but he gives it a proper punch hole. Hmm. This seemed perfectly fine. Hands it back after he takes an extensive look. I sli slip it quickly back into my suitcase. Say, Doppler, what would happen if I were to lose my ticket? Or am you planning on it? No, I just don't know how things work around here, that's all. Sure, sure. It always stays just smiley, but his eyes feel like they're boring into me. Kinda, yeah, I wasn't looking at his eyes, but they do. Well, to put it lightly, <laughs> you'd be in a world of hell. <laughs> well, you can't reach your stop without a ticket, right? Yeah, right. Can't tell if he's joking or not. Either way, this guy really puts me off. Yeah, I already spent way too much time here. A job's a job, yep. Look after your ticket, meow. That was torture for me, too. <laughs> and so the fiend pitters away. Shaheen said that there would be cruel souls on the railway. He really meant it. So, seeing another person eases my pain just a bit. Oh, the suitcase. That's right. I hadn't really looked it through. Hopefully, I'll find something that jogs my memory. Oh, yes. The precious silver ticket. I better keep my eye on this. Hmm. Right before a thousand. Just that very four. Just as I observed before, it's thin but weighty. I can't read most of the characters engraved into it. Oh, my stuff. Hmm, what's this? Put my hand across to the light silver dust and clicks the pads of my fingers. It's thin, like glitter or fairy dust. Can't help but be amused by that. Specs? Don't you look at that? A pair of golden rim specs. Well, it's not real gold and the construction's a bit flimsy. From this, I saw only to do side weak vision and even weaker bank accounts. <laughs> Nothing else comes to mind. Postcard. This. It's true to tell me something. Greetings for Orpheus Bay. Except the postcard's really blank. Apparently, I was too busy to write anything yet. Ah, so frustrating. The front of the car has a pleasant photo of the ocean. Unfortunately, nothing specific comes to mind. Flowers? Huh. Once these must... Once, these must have been lovely, now they're dead. When you pluck a flower, no matter what, it will end up wilting. I can't imagine what or who they were once for. Rings? A pair of wedding rings. They feel impossibly heavy in my hands. These are made of real silver. How much did they cost me? I can't for the life of me remember. Even worse, I can't remember who they're for. A wave of misery washes over me. The reason I am on this train had to do with these rings. I could feel it. These were so important. But when I try to dig deeper, my throat begins to close up. That's enough for now. That's the case shut again. Yet again, I didn't learn anything new. In fact, I feel almost worse than before. I checked. Ah, such frustration. I wish I knew. Just one small thing for certain. What the frick is that? I was so lost in thought, I failed to notice that a Jigglypuff walked up to me. A rabbit of all things. They stand blankly, staring with their red rim on. Could you stop? Could you go away? <laughs> um, are you lost? They simply keep staring. Is your mom here? Is something on my 
Wait, er, mask. Sure, are you cheerful? <laughs> I admit my spirits aren't that high. Nay, hey, sure. Cheerful. Ashen, you crying cheers. Ah, oh, that makes sense. I see now. Sir is asking if I was crying tears. If I was crying tears or if I was tearful. What a strange question. I don't think I could get it. It's kazoo. <laughs> I don't think I could. Uh, I don't think I could even if I wanted to. Not this foggy face. I'm not sure what you're referring to. I'm just fine. But sure. I heard cheers. Uh, I think your heart was cheerful. I kept hearing cheers, so I went to see. That's something I don't know how to respond to. Maybe my heart really was in tears. Uh, I sure. I have you in knots, don't you? I, I have you in knots. Oh, I have you in knots. I am so sorry. I only read good English, not this creature's speech. You're like a character from One Piece. Also, why is your eyebrows just a wiggly line? Suddenly, child bursts into powerful tears. I'm so sorry, sir. I sh shot you, you sure, with sadness. Uh, it's quite all right. No man should wish to hear about cheers. It's just so emasculated. I think you mean emasculating, dear. Emas emasculate. You can't say sunlight. I don't. I wouldn't recommend you try that word. I was never keen in my school, sir. I'm sorry. I feel bad. <laughs> it's okay. Please calm down. It's all right. My heart was crying. All right. It was tearful. Finally, she hears me out. <laughs> I just cried anymore. We have to swim through the cars. That's all right, sir. Sure. It ain't emasculated to, to have a shop sometimes. She passed by need to comfort me. Thank you there. Oh, that's actually comforting. The name's Billy. You, sh you have my welcomes. Billy, the rabbit child. What a small minor child, even if she is a big sister. I... <clears throat> I have it in my face that these people look weird. Like the cat looks weird, the rabbit looks weird. But then it hits me that I'm a, just a tall void creature with a devil mask on <laughs> that I'm talking through. So I look weirder than probably these people. Nice to meet you, Billy. I'd love to give you my name. I'm afraid I don't remember what it is. Y you don't remember? Sure, what a tragedium. A terrible tragedy, I'm certainly. So I'm trying to find something to make me remember. Oh, yeah, I'm looking for something too. M me precious thing. Oh, well, what is it? Can't help but be infected with her sudden excitement. This would be at least a nice distraction. It's true. It's precious as pie. Because I have it. I have these pearlish. Per pearlish, you saw. Pearls? Like from the ocean? Aye. Pearlish, and and I got on this train here, and I didn't have the precious thing anymore. Waterworks again, Billy. Don't worry, we'll find it. We, we, we will. Absolutely, it has to be around here someplace, right? Sh sure. So brave. Actually, I know I could clue, no clue. I'm gonna find those pearls. Now she sees me as so brave. <laughs> I have no choice but to deliver. Let me get looking for them. Many hands make light work. Aye, aye, sir. Your words be law, sir. I shoot up suitcase in one hand and Billy's paw in the other. And away we go. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> we're in a suit, a devil mask, and I'm either part of the core. I have no idea what we're doing. Sure. Are you doing Rosie in there? I've got myself tucked away half halfway under one of those tables of dining cars. Dairy dining cars dairy up out here and up. I can't remember how to say that word. Just in the bar, there's nobody maiming the place. That means we can search everywhere as places we peace. Except I'm sorry, Billy, but there's nothing but carpet in this thing. Sure, no need for sharis. I can see you putting your whole shower in shoes. I appreciate the appreciation, dear. More searching that leads to nothing. The furnishing of this place are woefully outdated and worn, with films of dust blanketing the entire rooms. Furthermore, the construction is just confusing. Walking from one car to another in a linear fashion, there's somehow 
labyrinthian with the repeating cars. And when they don't repeat, they somehow seem to be out of order. Say, Billy, if you had a bar and a dining car, wouldn't it make sense to put them together? If people were looking for a proper drink, they'd have a meal first and head to the next car. Place them too far apart seems like a bad business decision. Whoever built this place must have been halfway silly. Pull myself off from under the table with a sigh. If I were to have a drink, I'd want to... to walk off me shepherd first. Well, that's a peculiar line of logic indeed. Sure, you just don't understand. Damish must keep a fig. A fig? No reason why you couldn't keep one even if the bar was next car. Although, I didn't see any figs stuck in the cabinets here. Sure, you're actually silly. Fig, as in tall glasses of water. Too weed. I damish that dummy got got oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know what you're saying, Billy. I have no idea what you're saying to me. You have to you have to know sign language, you have to write it down. <laughs> that dummy got garbage up to here. Ah, figure. Hey, how did a little kid learn to speak so indecently? Clever observation, sure. Two weeks. I'd like to give our parents a talk or two. Seriously, what did they speak to you, gibberish? Except they probably aren't here. Billy, are your parents on the train? Nay, they be off sailing most like it. I thought you were a sailor or you were on boat life because you had this little thing here and you said, aye, aye, captain. You mean you don't know for sure? Sure, I prefer them to be sailing than joining me. I shouldn't judge family matters like this. It's rude to intervene. I can't help but be concerned. Hmm? There's a clear ringing. I hear it's coming from the last car. We already went to that car and it was empty. Jitter overtakes us both. M me, hearts. It's in not just. Now calm down, dear. I'm sure it's just an auditory illusion. Hallucination. Yes, an obligatory hallucination. <laughs> you heard it. I just copy what I'm saying, child. Of course. And we both could just coincidentally had it at the same time, which is not very possible. Of course. We sharing it to be in coins and dentists. Sure, I'm fearing for my soul. <laughs> I'm just giving them a heavy pirate. This is a little girl. <laughs> Her pirate accent's so heavy. I'm sorry. I don't think I've been doing bad voice acting. I'm so sorry this character introduced him through all my voice acting off. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I really don't know if it's actually fine, but it feels like the right thing to say. I I'll go check things out. Can you stay here for me? I. Well, guards at home bash with me life, sir. I salute the brave soldier. From the pounding heart, I am much valiantly to my doom. No, don't go thinking about it like that. That's too m masochistic. I'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be... There's nobody there. Everything is as we left it. Even the dust seat settling on the empty seats slide undisturbed. I can't tell if I'm half mad and duly loony at this point. No, that was real. A sudden wave of chills comes over me as the car changes somehow. H Hello? C can anybody hear me? I am answering in the most peculiar fashion. Oh! Look who finally decides to come out the <laughs> The car is no longer empty. Out of nowhere, they simply appeared. Like phantoms. With some hesitation, I approach one of the figures. Excuse me, do you happen to- Oh. You guys like- Are you guys kind of like me? How I was before? The person I am speaking to is something like a translucent shadow, flickering like a candle in gentle wind. You don't acknowledge me at all. Or at least not in any way that I can recognize. Can you hear me? No response. I wave my hand as in saying hello. It seemed to be an entire- Maybe not like me. I seem to be in another world entirely. They won't be able to talk for some time, please understand. I know that live voice anywhere. It's my boy, Shaheen. You were just like this when you first entered this train. It's the way of things. Well, that's a strange way to enter a train. <laughs> a strange way is suitable for a strange train, isn't it? 
That makes sense in its own nonsensical way. Uh, that's just right. This kid knows more about this place than I do. If anyone would have seen Billy's treasure, it would be him. Say, Shaheen, have you seen any, uh, uh pearls? Oh, plenty. That was just what I thought. That's fantastic. Where'd you find them? I didn't find them myself. Rather, I traded for rather I traded for them when some merchants came to town. Apparently, it's a more popular practice in southern regions. I suppose I did find a few myself, but they were of hardly any quality. I should have known. Ah, of course, it was too good to be true. That's why I get for not being Pacific. Any reason for the question? I'm actually looking for Pacific pearls. They're supposed to be on this train. A friend of mine, well, they're important to her, so I was hoping. <laughs> That's much clever now. Pearls on this train. Uh, much clearer now. Pearls on this train. Hmm. We both dive into deep thoughts. I apologize. I haven't seen anything like that here. No need for apologies. I'll try looking for them myself. Uh, have you had any events on your memory yet? Honestly, I was hoping he wouldn't bring that up again. Billy has been such a great distraction. I must have forgotten the pain in my chest. I feel so disheartened. N no, not yet. I searched for my case just as you said, and nothing solid came to mind. It's like I'm playing games with myself, but I can't seem to win. That's troubling. I don't know how to help you in this case. But you have some time, so don't worry too much. It will come naturally. Now I just feel like he's trying to make me feel better. How do I always end up being the child? <laughs> I know, I have a present that might help you. He produced a set of silver inlaid cards from his pocket. They have a dazzling amount of detail in their patterns. You want to play old maid? <laughs> old maid, that's right. Ever fortune telling. It's a skill that helps when you don't know what to do. I was about to say, I don't believe in that ridiculous stuff. But as I am on the train in the middle of space, <laughs> I withhold my statement. Jaheen pulls a stack, uh, pushes a stack of cards to me. Go ahead, take one, and no looking. Might as well try it. I was destroying the entire stack, I slip one from the bottom. Oh my god! Ah! No! I told you not to look. It soils the fortune when you do. Jaheen, what was that car just now? Please understand. You're not interpreting it correctly. It, it's quite scary looking, isn't it? But it simply means the end of things. For example, the end of your search. Oh my god. Aren't you bothering the other passengers? Or the end of this conversation. I'll find you another time. And just like that, he ducks away. How does he move so fast? What's from you doing here, valued passenger? I was, uh, enjoying the fine company of these good people. Isn't that right, Miss Lady? The child next to me does not respond. I better not hear you- I better not hear you causing any trouble for your own yachts. Is that clear? Um, yes, sir. Thanks, Mew. Thank you, Mew. Well, you poor sister. I take that bell and beat you over the head. Get the frick out of here. Looking like a palico. And he finally leaves. <clears throat> Sorry about that. <laughs> I both faints from fear. That cat had such an interesting way about him. He could learn some consideration from a certain somebody. Ah, Billy. It'd be best to tell her that there's nothing to worry about after all. Billy. Billy. Hmm. This. Oh, frick. Billy's in here. Now there's my. Did she steal my suitcase? Billy, are you playing hide and seek? Check on the tables, through the cabinets, and back on the tables again. I'm getting to panic. She really is gone. Did you run off by herself? Is she okay? And my suitcase. My suitcase is my silver ticket. I think I'm supposed to protect no matter what. Ah, where did I go wrong? This why I feel like I'm about to lose it. I spot something at the center of the room. A dark feeling climbs to my chest and stays there. Shaheen, he told me. You'll find many a good soul on these tracks, but there are cruel ones as well. Black spot. It's a pool of soot. It thinly trails all the way up the ceiling into a crack in the wall. A sickness that stays. It, it's dark. What a simple observation. Of course it is. It's soot. But something about it sucks me in. Makes my chest ache even more. 
That hollow pain begins to echo stronger the more I stare, making me torturously aware of my condition. I stretch my eyes along the trail in the wall and focus on the crack which looks to be bleeding soot. How menacing. So a bit closer, there seems to be the slightest sense of something burning. A fire? On this train? Wherever it's happening, it's happening in the next car. My heart jumps into my throat. Tentatively, I look to the door. It shouldn't... It, look, it shouldn't look like that, right? The window is completely blacked out. Beyond that door, Billy waits for me. My suitcase, too. But staring to the blackened window gives me a shock akin to standing near the edge of a cliff. My hand reaches for the door handle, but before touching it, I feel a powerful chill. It's cold. It's dark. Right then, I realize I just might be too afraid of the dark. It's silly. There's something about it I can't shake. The galaxy outside has pinpricks of starlight and color, but the deep emptiness of the car scares me the most. How I'd like to run away. If I ask Doppler, I can get a new ticket. I just need to sign some papers. I can simply walk out like it's nothing. I don't need to be afraid of the dark. Billy. That's right. There's Billy in there. She's only a little kid. A little kid alone in there. That's what I'm talking about. The ache in my chest nearly steals my breath as I open the door and walk to the unknown. It's not too bad in here. And this car feels different. Like I fall into an abyss I can't crawl out of. It's so dark, can't tell where any of the walls are. They are stale. I imagine this is what it is, what it's like being in a coffin. But there's another person in this coffin. Illuminated by a perfect window of moonlight is a girl in white. In contrast to the rest of the car, she's almost glowing. For some reason, I have the thought of running to her. Some latent instinct to trust her and call her name. When I go out to call, I can't think of a name to say. Instead, I shuffle through the black feeling, where a seat besides her, one materializes. Oh, my God, there's a, here's her face right here. I was looking like, what am I looking at? I can't see much of her face, but I can tell she's smiling. You know, I had two wedding rings, but I can't use them now, so I apologize about that. I'm sorry, but do I know you? You used to be freezing surprised for a moment, but then resumes her wonderful smile. You don't? A lot has been happening lately, so I think I've confused myself. I might have bonked my head somewhere. I can feel my heart about to leap out. She doesn't laugh, but instead keeps smiling. Um, have you by chance seen a, a rabbit around here? Oh, like a white rabbit? No, it's like a, a pink one. She can't speak English at all. I think she's a sailor. <laughs> no, not like that. She's uh, a bit stout, has a peculiar way of speaking. If I were to describe it, it would sound something like, I sure you're looking for a bit shari for your show. <laughs> That's why she burst out laughing. It's a light, pretty sound. So the guy wants to hear again. Or I've heard again and again and again. <laughs> what kind of rabbit is that? A pirate rabbit? A sailor? I, I, it was a weird child. I, I don't know. She just might be. Does this talking rabbit have a timepiece as well? Not that I know of, but she's looking for pearls. Uh-huh. Her precious thing, right? Exactly. Except I haven't found any traces of it. Actually, I haven't found any answers to anything. This whole trip, I might be going crazy. Everywhere I go, I seem to hit a brick wall. She seems to be staring at me. I feel like my, I feel my neck heat up. Is there something on my mask? Nope. This is a case of the heart remembers when the mind doesn't, huh? Excuse me? I was just thinking, you're pretty odd. Your body is practically screaming out, but you can't even remember my name. Suddenly she claps her hands together. Well, sitting here won't do anything, right? Why don't you keep looking? It, here? In the dark? It can't be helped. Past the shoulder, I see a bit of a pit of nothingness. Avoid emanating, emanating stale air. M maybe we should get help first. Ah, you're the type to shrivel up at the first sign of danger. Th that's not true. The biting accusation catches me off guard. I'll admit, it hits harder than I thought. She looks me over with cold eyes. I was just making an observation. You seem so eager to find your friend, too. I, I what? I am. I have to. She stands up so she is in front of me. Challenging brights against the featureless background. She says nothing, but her eyes are fixed upon me. I'll keep searching. There are things I have to take care of. There's no running away here. I stand. I knew you'd come through. The girl smiles brightly and wraps herself around my arm. 
Together we walk into the dark. W. I, this might be someone I knew, maybe my wife. My footsteps meet the floor with echoing, uneasy sound. I can only walk forward. I'm afraid if I turn in the slightest, I'll get lost. Never mind that. I'm surely lost. I go to ask the girl for guidance, and my voice comes out in a petrified hush. Is this it? I met with a soft giggle. Just keep going, she says. She clamps onto my arm, even tighter than before. I feel that I have no choice. A feeling begins to arise within me. Once, a girl clamped onto my arm, tighter than I expected, and I had no choice but to give up. She knew then that I could feel her heartbeats, and I suspected that she could feel mine as well. It was possible not to. My chest was going to pieces. I always let myself get toyed with. I always go along with things. That's the worst thing about me. I don't have anything to call my own. I just give it all away. My arm begins to lose feeling around it. There is no heartbeat. Around it, there is no warmth. It's just empty. She's empty. I'm empty too. I want to stop walking, but she's got me in her hold. I'm swept along with her footsteps. Our pace is brisk, but the ground covered is complete mystery. Still, she seems sure. There's nothing here, I say. Billy's not here. She's close, I'm sure. How can you know? And the grip gets even tighter. The sound. For me, I know it is. There's somebody calling for me back there. Sir, sir, get out, run. Far away. A voice is for me. Quickly made aware, her, oh, made aware of how far the exit is, but it's now too late to worry. I turn my head to follow the voice when I'm jerked forward harder than I thought. Oh, well, I'm jerked forward harder than before. What are you doing? The girl snaps. It's there. It's right there. Please, come back. Run while you still can. Hmm. I'm sorry. I, I have to go. Worst spell before I catch myself. It's too late, isn't it? I turn around and push her off the best I can. It's dark in here. It's cold. I don't want to die in a place like this. Even if it's too late, I don't want to die here. I run with all I've got. Which, which direction? It doesn't matter. As long as I'm far away. My heart pounds in my ears and I can feel warmth burning beneath my mask. Jesus. My foot catches on some invisible thing and I go flying. The wind is knocked out of me. The mask is ripped from my face and my sheer force were sliding into the dark. I'm frozen on the ground. It's over. It's over. Nothing happens. I stay to move, but I don't hear anything behind me either. So I lay in fearful silence. Is it really okay to go? Shaking, I bring myself to my feet. The exit shouldn't be that far. I gotta... I got to take a step. I go to take a step. Come back to me. Something. Something. It self wraps itself around my waist and pulse. I'm yanked back. I still have my mask at least scream. All I can manage is a weak puff from I'm overtaken completely. Without a sound or pinprick of light, I was swallowed up by everything. Everything. I think that wears the face of a girl I once knew. A thing that takes and takes until there's absolutely nothing left. Don't be selfish. Just let me have a bite of you. Hello, dear passenger. Is it the worst has befallen you? While you tried, you couldn't regain those precious memories. That's because not everyone who tries to help you has good intentions. Glum, right? That's just how the world works, even if it's sad. It would be a shame if the story ended on such a dour note. So do your best. I know you'll find a way. Man, I did not save throughout the whole thing, so I have to run through this entire game again. I'll be right back. So we're back here with this abyssal creature that apparently is pretending to be someone. I asked you can save her. So this is just pretending to be someone. So I need a moment to rest. I won't give up on Billy, but my body just can't keep going. Ashamed, I hang my head without a word. I want to know myself. I want to help everyone. But now, now I just feel sick. A voice breaks the silence and it's the girl, but suddenly warm and gentle. The anger from before has melted back into the glowing figure of kindness. That's fine. It's good to rest, right? I nod weakly. It's your memory. You're being weighed down by something you don't even know. But that won't be a problem. She's boring a hole into me. Really, she has, my hand on my, she has a hand on my shoulder, squeezing tightly. I feel 
guilty of something. I'm sorry. Things are fuzzy up here, you see. Somehow I feel like I'm being searched. Then her grip loosens. Again, she lets out her featherlight laugh. <laughs> You're a little dense, right? But it's been difficult, I suppose. I know that this will help. She presses something into my hand. Flowers. From my suitcase, actually. Everyone likes flowers. I said the scent of flowers can help revive memories. To remember. These flowers are dead. In fact, they're the same ones from my suitcase. They're so fragile. Looks like the petals will fall off any second. I hold my breath as to not disturb them. I look at me begins to float to the surface. Where did you find... They were on the floor of this car. Well, can you remember yet? In truth, they smell like dust with the stale air. It feels familiar. The feeling being inside a coffin is familiar. Oh, frick. Before I know it, words locked up begin to tumble out. It's dark. It's cold. It's what? It's dark. It's, it's cold. It's, it's getting hard. I leave for in my seat. Flowers press against my chest and gasp through the mask. It's impossible to breathe. The car had air a second ago and, and then it ran out. Even now, I could feel her eye on me boring a hole into my side. She's searching for something. If I fall apart, perhaps she can dig through the wreckage. Feels like I'm impossibly small in this expanse of black, yet too large for this tightening box. The flowers crumble apart in my straining fists. The pounding of my heart reaches my ears. Even as a faceless phantom, I can feel the adrenaline shoot through my veins. I'm going to die like this. It's, it's too dark. I have places to go. I'm, I'm too young to die. It hurts too much. The pain doesn't hit me, but rather resurges. Like a bubble floating to the surface, or a bud pushing through the soil. A feeling so immense is going to burst through. My body reacts with well rehearsed, rehearsed shock and I nearly fall out in my seat. This is what it's like to suffocate to death and it's a station my body remembers. Into the pain, I can see the girl looming over me, searching. There, there. She runs her hands over my arch back in a way that would be comforting if I was a child. Her hand moves in a stiff, practiced motion. There, there. Her pale face comes down to meet mine. You're doing well. Just a little more. I feel like I'm going to die. If you let it all out, you'll feel better. What's wrong with me? Why does it hurt so much? There, 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 there. Her face is so close now, but I don't feel any breath from it. I can help you if you remember me. She takes my shaking hand and gently slips something onto my fingers. It's a ring made of silver. Something so expensive, so heavy, so important in a way I can't remember. And her fingers the other half of the pair. All you have to do is open up. Slam of a door that rips me from my pain so that I can breathe again. Oh, frick, sir. Shaheen. The girl whips her head around to meet Shaheen's eyes and his face turns to that of horror. Come on, boy. You're not going to start cause a fuss here, are you? What would your mother say? S sir, please. We have, a, we have to leave right now. He stands at the door, not daring to take a step aside. He's shaking so hard, so wonder it doesn't collapse completely. What is this thing? What am I missing here? I've had enough. I'm pulled out of my own fear for just in time to push the girl away and run for it. She's taken off guard, her efforts still focused on the frightened boy. I have to get out of here. I have to get out. Jane extends an arm to me. I take it. But I'm not thinking. I twist it to take a last look at the thing. I twist it last to take a last look at the thing chasing me. I'm horrified. A girl I can barely remember once glowing in the moonlight. Just let me in. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Go, oh, Jesus Christ. Not realizing my own speed, we both tumble out to on we both tumble out of the dark and into the safety of the previous car. What was that thing? <laughs> Crash landing. Through my foot in time, I slammed the door shut. Finally, it's over. We lay like gasping fish for a few minutes. The starry ceiling swims in circles till I shut my eyes. A girl. A girl. In a cold, dark space. I open my eyes and I open my eyes again and stare hard at the ring on my hand. Specks of the crumbled flower stuck to my fingers. The ring was for her. The flowers were for her. Everything was for her. But I can't think of her name. I sit up, my chest sore from all the action. The feathered boy is sitting at attention, but his hands are shaking ever so slightly. Hey, Shaheen. Shaheen, I have to ask you something. You can ask me anything. His voice can barely hold up. It's hard to watch, but I can't let him run away now. Sh Shaheen, I... I think you haven't been telling me everything, and I need you to be honest. <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean. And there, I felt like I was dying, but it was as if I'd experienced it before. I was suffocating. 
The image of cold nothingness flashes in my mind. Zane looks like he's about to be sick. Please tell me. Why are we on this train? It's quiet. I can see him sorting through his options, biting his lip in frustration. But it's pointless, because we both know the answer. This train, it delivers the dead to the afterlife. And we are here because we ran out of luck. I am so sorry that I couldn't find the words to tell you. Ah, uh, so that's what it is. I try to summon some kind of emotion. I try to find it in me to yell, scream, or burst into tears. But all energy within me is gone. At this revelation, I just want to take a nap. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Some things are so difficult to say. How could I tell you such a thing? Uh, I take Shaheen by the shoulder and look him dead in the eye. I need to ask you some questions. I need you to tell me the truth. Please, Shaheen. He sniffs. And nods his head like a guilty puppy. Who was the girl? Shaheen looks a bit confused my question. Uh-huh. It was a girl you saw. How strange. Strange. Then what did you see? I... It was my father. Last time I heard, he was quite alive. So he couldn't be on this train. The boy lets out a bitter laugh. If we saw different things, perhaps it's the effect of some illusion. A mirage of what you love most, I suspect. That sounds a bit cliche, but effective, wouldn't you agree? The girl's smiling face sticks like a pin in my memory. Effective, it certainly is. Too bad I can't remember anything else. What about Billy? He freezes at my question. The rabbit child. She's in there as well. I think so. When I left the room, she was gone, so I don't want to hear the answer. He doesn't want to give it. There's just signs between us. I... No, that's wrong. Of course it's wrong. That won't mean it's not true. Well, we don't know if it's true either. I didn't see her in there, so far we know she's still running around. She's looking for her shiny thing, after all. She wouldn't let anything stop her. Billy's so full of energy, I'm nearly envious. I, I couldn't imagine her. Her. That's how this train works. It's, it's, I, it's as I said. It delivers the dead to the afterlife. I don't know much beyond that. Please understand it's the truth. Into the train with death. We leave with the silver ticket. And if you don't have a ticket, then what? And there's no hope for you. All you can do is suffer. Um, man. <sighs> what if I don't leave? For a while, it should be fine. I wouldn't worry. But one day you start crumbling. We're dead, you see. We have nothing but we're lent bodies so that we might make the trip. Unfortunately, these bodies aren't me built to last. So you'll naturally start breaking. <laughs> it's a troublesome fate, isn't it? Body before mind and all that. I can feel a jolt of panic within me. There's got to be a way to stop it, right? A remedy for death after death, is it? Impossible. These bodies are borrowed and they must always be returned. Of course, there has been many attempts at cur cures, but the price of such miracles is terrible. Eating the dust of another after they've crumbled, for example. The one in the car might have done just that. I can't picture it. It's too awful. That's how far people are willing to go to live, and crumbling away must be twice as awful. How will I get my ticket back? So it was taken from you? Yes. I once looked for it in that car. The boy gazed at me with something in his eyes. Yet again, there's something he doesn't want to say. I'll have to forget that ticket. Maybe you can apply for a new one at the bureau. How long would that take? It was a pain laugh. A long time. A long, long time. But it's all we can do, isn't it? Or at least I for my interrogation, he hangs his head in silence. He didn't have the energy f for anything anymore. Would it be so bad to nap on the floor right here? So it won't change anything, but there's not much to worry about when you're unconscious. I have to get her. You can't. You could hurt. That's not an issue. <laughs> Not an issue, is it? Throwing yourself away like that. I'm sorry. Just really. Do you really think you can... Gotta try. I met with an incredulous look. I'm sorry. I just can't believe it. Back then I asked you something. You said I have to. I was willing to entertain your whims. How could somebody be so full of hope? I asked. I could nearly believe it. But now, now it's all too much. 
I don't understand how you can keep going. I wait quietly for his emotions to watch to wash over. It's strange seeing him like this, but with this intensity, I can only assume it's been burning for a long time. The feeling of being trapped like a bug in a box. A bug waiting to decay with no sign of rescue. He eventually wears himself out. Childish. Or childish. I don't know how child how is childish to hope a little. A big part of being an adult is being unsafe after all. That's a good quote. There are things I can't let be. You're the child here. You're not supposed to worry about these things. I'm not a child. You're the child. You don't know what you're doing. That's a pretty rude way to talk to an elder. Where are your manners, young man? I wouldn't normally pull such a low card, but if it gets him to quiet down, quickly he pulls himself together. I, I apologize, I... And none of that sorry sop act. Got it? Because there's nothing to be sorry for. All you have to do is rest. So go take a nap. Captain's orders. After a moment, a ray breaks through the clouds. Great for laughter without a hint of pain. <laughs> go take a nap. That's what you think it is. That's what you think is it. That's what you think is an adult like. Jesus Christ, I'm sorry. It's so struggle me to get out. Well, when I'm stressed, I normally just go to sleep. You sleep like a baby, I'm sure. I'll give you an adult like whack on the head if you keep poking fun at me. <laughs> I. I can't support your recklessness. Whatever you choose to do. But I wish very deeply that I have the that I had the faith to believe in what you say. I'm thankful that someone like you exist. But for now, I beg you to rest. Thank you, Shaheen. You lock eyes for a moment. He's confirming something, or maybe offering me pity. I wish he wouldn't make that face. The feathered boy offers me a cordial smile before seeing himself out. You better take a rest too. Against my better judgment, I turn my head to revisit the dark gash in the wall. Right now, it's so peaceful, but beyond there, beyond that, my exhaustion overpowers my fear. No more darkness for now. I leave to where it's safe. Ah, everything is normal out here. Like all the horror I just saw was a bad dream. You haven't been causing me any trouble, right? Never so irritable train attendant appears before I can even take a seat. His customer service smile is plastered on with spite. Me, I'm innocent. Oh, there he is, said Value Passenger. My innocence is a killer in shirts. Say, Value Passenger, you look like a total mess. Yes, very sharp of you, huh? You swing where you stand. That posture of yours is catast catastrophic. Jesus Christ, you're a cat. You don't have to make cat puns every freaking time. You think I go around making human puns where I freaking walk? Do you? <laughs> Would you believe I've been running from a freakish suit creature? Doubles, whole expression change. He's suddenly gone stiff. Oh, what do you mean, freakish suit creature? I mean what I mean. The dining car has gone totally black. B black, you say? <laughs> You'd better be lying to me, soot boy. They're gonna be in a world of hell. Hell? That's not so bad. What are you mumbling about now, freak? Doppler, it doesn't matter. Not at all. You see, I'm already dead. The last of the sex that rests my energy. The last thing here before it gets to dark is Doppler's muffled meow as I collapse to the ground. Taking flight. He knocked me? In my slumbering mind, I go to find things that make me happy. The sound of the ocean. Promises made and kept walking with the arms interlocked. The details are fuzzy, but I try to imagine the meaning of it all. All oceans, or just one in particular. What promises? And who was it that I walked arm in arm? There is nothing definite, just feeling. The sensation of being held, touched, of my hair being run through, and my thrilling, and the thrilling sight of silver in my hands. The warmth in my chest from imagining that weight wrapped around my finger. The excitement from seeing a postcard with a pretty ocean. I've never been to the ocean, but the movies made it look so nice. The ocean. That's where I want to take her. That's, that's where I'll make her happy. I guess I was planning to propose at the ocean. I wake up to the sound of tracks yet again. My hands find their way to my face with ner nervous hope. The ring of my fingers clings against the hard shell of the mask. Ah, I don't know what I was hoping for. It's not like this is a dream. I wish this was all just a nightmare. My ticket's still gone. Billy's still gone. 
Such a short exchange we had, but her words were so sincere. The last thing I want to be is to be alone right now. The last thing I want to do is think about that. The rest of the passengers are still locked in their shadowy states. They waver unsteadily as if any of small movement will snuff them out. It's futile, but I approach one of them again. How are you? They stare past me, searching for something unseen. What are you looking for? No response. Of course they can't talk. They aren't fully formed yet. They still have, they still have yet to collect all of themselves. But, oh, how I want to speak to somebody. Somebody who knows what it's like to be a bit fallen apart. Do you know why you're here? Do you know what happened to you? It's because... Because... The shadow flickers softly, a featureless face betraying no feeling. I'm unable to admit such a terrible thing. You're here because you're dead. There's an overwhelming wave of hopelessness, infusing in dread that puts a sour taste in my mouth. Shaheen, you were feeling that all this time. I'm sorry. Have a good evening. I leave the shade as it was, staring off into space with the rest of their party. The thing that I am looking for cannot be found here. Behind the door is the old familiar bar. Moody lightning and the bottle's all in place. Am I gonna start drinking now? If someone else is gonna walk up on me, I tell them my story. The difference is that instead of a devil, there's that wicked feline nursing a drink. Oh, it's you, Doppler. <laughs> There's even Bart to hide his attitude now. He simply goes back to drinking. Cat looks seriously begrudged. Guess my better judgment, I take a seat next to him. You doing okay? Hmm, what do you think, sup boy? The dark monster thing just infested my train. Now I gotta do paperwork, clean up, reparations. Oh, I'll probably get a pleasant chat with the bureau. I'm feeling just peachy. I like how he doesn't even do the cat puns anymore. It's like, I'm tired of these freaking cat puns. I just do it because I, I, I think that's what you guys expect of me. I don't get paid enough for this. You don't get paid at all. You're an intergalactic train conductor. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry for what? Heck are you sorry for? I feel this might have been my fault somehow. I've caused you trouble. Don't give yourself that much credit. You're a pain in the neck, all right. But that nasty thing had nothing to do with you. Now we've relief washes over me. It's only because I'm in such a low moment that words from him can, cost, can feel like praise. Doppler, you're not so bad. Don't get me wrong. If it wasn't against regulation, I'd happily fling you off this ride. <laughs> Why? It makes a discon disconcerting, yeah, disconcerting growl before pouring himself a tall one. Because folks like you piss me off. Uh, back to square one it is. Doppler downs the glass in one frustrated shot. Upon close inspection, it's really just soda water? Who goes to a bar to drink soda water? And just soda water? Milk makes more sense. <laughs> Milk and soda water are the two drinks people get at a bar to look normal. Hey, what's the mumbling for now, freak? Hmm, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> what? That really gets to him. Good. You're a real first class weirdo. All obsessed with me like a freak. Why, Doppler, my thoughts are just completely consumed by you. Huh? You make me ask a lot of questions about the world. Like, if God is truly kind and loving, why does somebody as you, <laughs> why does somebody as rude as you exist? <laughs> That's a very <laughs> hurtful insult. <laughs> if God is truly kind and loving, why does somebody as rude as you exist? Should enduring an excessive amount of cat puns account as psychology, psychological abuse? Or what kind of loser drinks soda water alone in a bar? The kind of loser who cares about his health, that too. I don't touch nasty things. Soda water isn't good for you, bro. What the frick are you talking about? You're still freaking up your insides. Mountain Dew melts your teeth. <laughs> but if I really cared about my health, I wouldn't be working this joint, would I? Hot tempered, no good feline looks like he hasn't slept in weeks. On a closer look, his uniform looks rough in places. Well, it's taken care of, but most certainly not new. Hey, Doppler, why do you do it? As one with silence, it's not that he needs to think, it's that he simply is exhaust he's simply exhausted. The room takes a mordant shift. In the end, two types of folks grease this with rails. Idiots or guys in real tight spots. The pay is low and the emotions are high. I mean, you got sorry sops begging to be let off all the time. I got a wife, I got kids and all that. But I'm just a guy who takes your tickets. Eventually you learn to separate yourself a little. He gives me his unusual salty sneer. That's just what us adults have to do. I don't want to believe it, but putting myself in his place, it could be different. 
seeing people come and go, the tears and panic and fear building. Still some part of me doesn't want to accept it. What's it now, genius? <laughs> I was just thinking. It's not being an adult is. Adults have to confront their feelings, not cut themselves off, right? I would hate to be separate from everybody. Aren't you naive? Like a cute little puppy, huh? Like a dog. A dog who runs themselves ragged from keeping everyone pleased. I'd rather run myself ragged and end up like you. Toast says the dead man. You caught in a corner. I want to whack him with dead. I'm very surprised that throughout your whole career, no one's ever tried to punch you at all. That guy's a way of getting me in the sour mood. This is a man who's dead inside. Like, we're not that much different. But still, I don't want to leave. I don't really want to be alone right now. Hey. Ugh, that cat. I don't want to be alone right now, but I don't want to get picked on either. I pretend to ignore him. I know you can hear me. Absolutely do not hear him. Playing games, funny guy? What are you, a clown? If you're so keen on being a clown, I'll make sure to drop you off at the circus where you belong. He speaks harshly, but pours me a drink before sliding it down. Yet again, my ring clinks against the crystal glass. This ring. Hmm? The soot monster has the other half of the set. The cat doesn't say anything. She has my luggage and ticket too. She might even have Billy. I felt like I was sinking back. It's interesting, it's not like, oh yeah, I think it was white. I felt like I was sinking back there, or like something was being pulled out of me. But I don't want to see any of it. Even if I never get my ticket, I'm scared of seeing it. Though there's a stone in it, I'm awful. I'm rambling on in front of this guy. But it's like there's a faucet in me and I can't twist it shut. Ticket doesn't matter anyways, right? I mean, I'm already dead. I can't get much worse than this. Except it has. It's getting much worse. Ugh, I can't get rid of this feeling. I'll never see the ocean. I'll never get to her this, give her this ring. I'll never get my ticket. I'll never get off this train. I'm dead, so it doesn't matter, but it still hurts a lot. I'm worn out, as if I ran a marathon. The front of my mask is slick. I still had a face, would that be of sweat or tears? A heavy despair fills the bar up to this brim, and in it, I'm floundering. Doppler waits until my breathing slows. He never looks my way. You won't be stuck forever. I made a call with the Bureau. We'll make a stop and you'll be in for investigation. Gotta ask about the monster and all that so you can take care of the ticket things there as well. It's hell to get through, but you're not stuck. Oh. You know what? You're, you're a right. You're a cunt. But you're not so bad. I considered giving him my thanks, but he'd probably poke fun at me somehow. So I just sheepishly nod and take a drink. Soda water. Got a problem with that? Not at all, sir. <laughs> Cheeky. And Doppler stands up. Feel a small panic within me. Where are you going? <laughs> what do you mean think? To work. Oh, come on. You thought I was going to fly with you all night? That's right. He has things to do. And I have a car. What's happening to it? It's locked up good and tight. So now the speck of soot can escape. Although the dang carpet's already ruined. So Billy might be locked up too. Maybe so. Who knows? Do you know what happened to her? Gee, value passenger, you sure ask a lot of questions. Really can't mute to get to your thick skull. There's nothing you can do. So sit and be quiet. What is this, a timeout? Can't just do nothing. But last time I almost lost it. The image of the dark creature sent the chill down my spine. Doppler adjusts his suit a bit and turns to go. Everything around that car is locked up tight. See out of our business, got it? You have no idea what you're doing. His smile is bright, but his words are fierce. I feel a heat in my chest. Frick no, I'm not letting this go. Doppler knows how much more knows much more than me. Actually, I feel that everyone does. But it feels wrong just to let this slip away. I have to go. I have to dive into the dark. But as he said, it's all locked up tight. Meaning, there's a key. And that key just might be on Doppler. My mind begins to teeter in a very dangerous direction. I sip, it, I sip innocently in my com complimentary soda water. Mmm, tasty. Don't worry about me, kitty cat. I'm practically an angel. I'm just minding my own business. I love that I say this with the devil mask on. <laughs> it gives a cool little image. Weirdo. 
Tyler gives me one last nasty side eye before heading to the door. And that's when I go for the biggest bottle I can swipe. I'm sorry. Oh, frick. I didn't think I was going to do that. I thought I was going to try to freaking Assassin's Creed pick it off of him. Jesus. I slip the bottle against the back of Dabba's head with all my strength. I kill him in the process. <laughs> he falls to the ground completely limp. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. And this is fine. He's unconscious. All because I had to do all because I did such a barbaric thing. This is because of Hufty's influence. Oh, I'm definitely not getting into heaven like this. Yeah, you can cut that off your bucket list, buddy. I think hard enough on it. Doppler is actually a pretty rude fellow. So maybe in some abstract, minuscule way, he possibly sort of had it coming. I mean, I kind of thought he would get knocked across the head eventually, so maybe you just put that process up. Obviously, that's all a lie, but it makes the act of searching his limp body a bit easier on the conscious. I rustle through the pockets, uh, careful not to wake him. Take some time searching, but... Aha! Frick yeah, the coolest key in existence. In the inner pocket of the suit jacket is an ornate golden key. It's old, but heavy in my hand. Hopefully that's it. If it's not, I don't know what, what I'll do. Uh, well, that's like you to run. I don't want to meet that cat when he wakes up. I'll think about the consequences later. Dang! You should not be getting up so quick. That's a whole bottle. I lay the snoozing feline back down to rest and tiptoe away. You... Dang, f freak. It... it die. Into the dark. <laughs> Is this the lock? <laughs> Just jump over. <laughs> My heart starts beating. That's not... Yeah, I guess that's the lock. My heart starts beating unbelievably fast. I want to run, but it's too late to go now. Not, not, not with all that's happened. Overpower extensive smoke emanates from beyond the door. It's dangerous here. Behind the slit trench door is a void of things unseen. And against the will of my screaming heart, I slide the key and turn. And in, in, in turn. Black is the color. Here we go, fellas. This might be the final one. Excuse me. Excuse me, young man. Just a little longer. Ugh! Poked in the side by something sharp and wakes me right up. Ah! I'm in the company of a stately older woman, and her expression is one of her slight annoyance. She wags her devious poking pencil in the air to scold me. Don't you know it's ungentlemanly to fall asleep on an innocent stranger's? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, no, ma'am. I bow my head several times in nervous session, but even then my eyelids can hardly stay open. Uh, uh, there is. Sorry. Oh, please. The sharp station of a pencil smack in the back of my head yanks me back to reality. Ah! I'm sorry, ma'am. She responds with another annoyed look, but flags down and attends to order some coffee. The attendant returns with a steamy drinks, and the lady hands one to me. Here you are. Thank you, ma'am. Ah, that tastes just wonderful. Truth be told, I haven't ordered a single thing since during this train. I haven't got the funds. Instead, I've been scoffing down the pickled plums and rice I packed in secret. This trip is going to be a bit longer than expected. I'm down to my last bento. So, heavenly coffee, fresh out of the pot, tastes like an ambrosia from the gods. The stately woman seems to observe me with slight amusement. Have you ever been on a train like this before? N no, ma'am. I thought as much. I felt like a dig. I can't blame her. A lot of other folks seem to fit, uh, fit in more. Their new clothes, polished shoes, and clean white gloves make me look like a country mouse in comparison. The lady herself is particularly, dignif particularly dignified, even if she kept stabbing me with a pencil. She keeps scribbling something down on a notebook and in her lap, grimacing, and then flipping to a new page. Don't you know it's ungentlemanly to peek at others' letters? Oh, uh, don't worry. That's nothing good anyway. She dejectedly tosses the writing, the writing instruments into her purse and goes straight to grumbling. This was intended to be a vacation, but all I've been having so far is a grand old depression. All of my exquisite plans fell apart in front of me. I'm sorry to hear that, miss. You're quite sweet. Hmm. Why don't you join me in the dining car sometime? I cough into my drink. Traveling alone as a man has presented an unexpected danger. I, uh, um, please. I was only joking. It's clear that you have someone already. That line is delivered with a tinge of bitterness. I'm seeing somebody. So, that's how I'm on this trip. I kind of read that wrong. Sorry about that. My, 
If all goes well, I'll be the luckiest guy in the world. It raises a brow. I dig into my pockets and pull out a small velvet pouch. Oh my goodness. Aren't they pretty? Well, they're as pretty as I could get with what I had. Is it a surprise? It sure is. The woman puts on a vexed expression. That's a terrible idea. Women hate surprises. What? All of them? That doesn't sound right. Women say they love to be surprised, but we actually want to know everything. Uncertainty is the enemy of all women. All women? Because it honestly sounds like it's just you. I'm bound much with yet another pencil. Don't you know it's unladylike to stab innocent people with pencils? <laughs> I should know ungentlemanly to rub your picturesque love story in front of a heartbroken lady. How's I supposed to know something like that? Men are so unobservant. There we go again with careless generalizations. I promise you, it's no picturesque love story. You've had to overcome a lot. I worked hard to get where I am, and so did she. This isn't some in-the-moment decision. Actually, now that I think of it, she actually really does hate surprises. <laughs> The more that I think about it, the worse she gets. I didn't even pack enough lunch. Goodness, calm down. If you need a proper meal, I don't mind purchasing one for you. That's not the issue here. My anxiety is getting the best of me. Well, I wish she would lay off a bit. The lady is intent on dissecting me further. Tell me, why do you think she would say yes? That's a good question. Being surrounded by such well-to-do folks reminds me of everything I, lay, I, li I lack. Just some dreamer taking a long ride. I searched for an answer to convince both her and I. Well, I went to visit her at the park once. She was on a bench reading something that looked pretty complicated, and so she was completely absorbed. She didn't even notice me when I sat down beside her. Eventually, she finished the book and saw me there. And she gave me this amazing smile. I think it meant, thank you for waiting for me. I don't know where I was going with this, so my voice shares off weakly. The lady pierces me with an unscrutable gaze. That's the most sentimental... Satriarch, snarm, smarmy love story I've ever heard in my life. And in front of a heartbroken woman, no less. Again, how was I supposed to know? Mm. You are rather genuine. I'll just have to give you my blessing. I went expecting another dastardly strike from the pencil. That she hands me something. Greetings. Oh, you gave me the card. It's a postcard with the calming beach on front. Oh, there's nothing written on this one. That's because I don't have anybody to write it to. Not anymore. So you can have it. Maybe if it all goes well, you can send it to your parents to inform them of the good news. Thank you very much. That's a postcard for the place we're heading to. Have you been to the ocean before? I, I haven't. Why don't you take a look? It's something that you that can't quite be captured by pictures alone. That's my composure completely pressing my face against the glass in excitement. Wow. Is it that lovely? It just makes me depressed. Too many bad memories. I've never seen anything so big. Well, except maybe the factory. Take a look while you can. We're about to be in a tunnel for a while. It's too beautiful. Overcome with giddiness, I give into a stupid idea. Going somewhere? I just want to see the ocean a bit more before it gets dark. So all I have into my suitcase. Get a woman to rush bow and make a brick for the next car. So we we died in, in the tunnel, didn't we? We suffocated to death because of the collapsed tunnel. And the ocean was one of the last things we saw. Man, that hurts. Behind me, I could hear somebody call me an idiot. I can make a good effort, but the ocean is stuck. It's stuck into darkness no matter how far I go. Hits me at last that I really am an idiot for thinking I can outrun a train. <laughs> the world is sucked into a little door of light that shrinks more and more and more the further in we go. I just have to wait for the other side to see the blue again. Hello? The car is empty with the dimming light. It makes everything feel eerie. But man, this would be a perfect place for a railroad murder mystery to start. I smack the sides of my face. No, don't go scare on yourself. It's a bit dark, though, so I can't help but feel a tinge of panic in me. Huh? I sense something. There's the rumble of the train, but, but something else, too. I'm thrown off my feet by a violent tremor. In the distance, I can hear a shrill scream. I tuck myself to a tight ball, shivering as the world collapses around me. Ah! And then I'm devoured by the dark. I wait for what feels like an eternity. It's so pathetic, but the tremors of shock shooting through my body prevent me from standing. It's like a pill bug at the first sign of danger I wait for it to end. The choking smell of dust and earth devours me. Actually, it's a bit hard to breathe. 
out of not courage, out of not courage, but desperation, I opened my eyes. It's black, but everything is completely gone. I can't even see my own hand. Weakly, I call out for somebody, but all I get is my terrified, shaking voice bouncing back to me. I don't even know exactly what happened. I, I, I might be. No. I spring to my feet, head slamming to the indented ceiling, pain shooting through my skull. Still, I rush forward, hands grabbing around with hopes of finding anything. There, filled with hope as I feel the cool touch of a door handle. I give it a yank. Huh? Come on, you stupid door, just open for me. The door finally comes loose and I'm sent flying to the side, an assortment of rocks and pebbles pouring in. I left parted in disbelief with the torn of the, with the torn off door handle gasp in my shaking, shaking grasp. My God. Still unable to see, I feel for the door again. It's hard. Rocks. It's been a cave-in, and that means I'm trapped here. The sound of stone hitting stone fills up the car as I begin to search as I begin to search for an exit in violent panic. There has to be a way out. Help is surely on the way. I'm not going to die in here. Am I? I can't be. There's no way I can die like this. I resort to trying to smash the rocks blocking my exit. I pick up one of the rocks that fell in and get to attacking. Come on, come on, please. I give it all I've got, but the stone in my grip crumbles apart, and I end up smashing my hand into the Im impenetrable wall. Yeah, I can't do it anymore. My legs give up beneath me. Pain climbs up my arm in hot, sharp jolts. It's too dark and I'm too tired. So I sit, to, so I sit, curled up in a tight ball in this dark, empty coffin, waiting, waiting, and waiting, waiting for nothing. What happened to everyone else? Are they searching for me? Unless that thought is interrupted by my own raspy gasping. It's getting seriously hard to breathe. I unbutton my collar slightly, but I know it makes no difference. <sighs> a cocktail of stress and exhaustion for my, forced my hand to loll back, resting against what might be a destroyed passenger bench. I have the urge to take a nap. <sighs> the headache within me grows. I can hear blood pounding in my ears. <sighs> My body pulls itself even tighter as the squeezing sensation intensifies. Ugh. It's dark. She's waiting for me. I can't just leave her like that. Jesus. That's brutal, man. That hurts. That... Oh, that hurts. And the night. The joy of it all echoes throughout my body. Cold sweat, trembling hands. A dry throat, every part of me is shaken. The constricting feeling is still there, shaking around my body, choking me to pieces. Sh oh, sure, Sh sure, you, you have to. The distant voice in the void. My body reacts with a shocking surge of adrenaline. I've got to get out of here. I can't just sit in the dark forever. <clears throat> I try to get up, realize the constricting feeling wasn't just from panic. A coat of sooty tendrils is climbing around my body, hugging me tight. They're most likely from that girl. I strain against the toxic vines. Ugh! They cut deeper into my sides. No, I can't let this be. Do the pain, come on, man. I try again. Ugh! My lungs are about to explode. I can feel the tendrils struggling against me. Come on, come on. Summoning all the energy left in me, I punish the body. I try and... Ugh! The cobwebs of darkness fly apart and leave me panting in worry of success. I would like to take a rest right about now. Where limbs have turned to stone. I just want all of this to stop. Just for a little bit. I'm dead after all. I deserve a little break. In the black void of the car, I can see the glint of things scattered on the ground. I clear away the soot and reach for them. I'm hit with a powerful melancholy. Marble? It's a cheap glass marble, the kind you can get from any old shop. What is it doing here? I don't have a clue. I don't think I had such a thing in my suitcase. My specs! Thankfully the glass has been broken, but they've bent a little bit. I could have tried to bend them back to shape. Actually, I don't have a face for them anymore, so there's not any point of that. Even if that's the case, I bend them back. The metal is cheap enough that it fixes without a fight. It's the one I received from that lady. But it's been torn to shreds. The lovely scene of the ocean has been ruined with toxic soot. I worked hard so I could ask, uh, so I could ask her by the beach. It would have been a, such a pretty scene. I wonder what kind of message I would have written if all had gone well. No use in thinking about that now. That's all. I tuck them away into my pockets. Memories of my past life come flooding in. Despair is an easy friend to make, 
even if the company is less than desirable. How much I wish that things had gone differently. How helpless I feel now that I am here. But there are things still I there are still things I have to do. It's a simple, naive resolve. But that's the one path I have I have right now, isn't it? I have to get Billy, and I have to get my ticket. It's as plain as it gets. Nothing I can do now will bring me back to life. But the very least I'd like if everyone got off at the right stop. So shaky as I am, I take a brave step back into the darkness. A darkness I intend to walk out of. That's what I'm talking about. Eventually, I come to a stop. It's a mass of inky black cobwebs. They're impossibly thick, and they cover the entire entryway to the next car. Possibly the last car. And this was the, most certainly the direction that small voice was coming from. I push against the inky cobwebs. They're sticky and tangled around my suit, around my suit jacket, pulling me in while keeping me out. The fear that they'll wrap around me enters my brain, but I push out for the sake of myself. Ah! Come on, I've got to. I'm so close to the end, I just know it. Come on, man. Rip through this freaking cosmic cobwebs. The cobwebs straining against my weight. It's there. It's there. I'm so close. Just a little more. Bill, I'm here. Snap. Without all the strength I didn't know I had, I pull apart of the darkness and walk to the other side. That's what I'm talking about. And there? There you are! Is Billy. Sure, she, you found me. Of course I did. She's all wrapped up in soot. Her voice knows me so bold is much quieter now. I, I'm sorry, sure. Sorry? What's that to be sorry for? I left the base, sure. Her tickets got swept up. She can't leave with no ticket. Please, don't worry about that. Come on, let's get you out of here. All my worries from earlier are swept away. I began ripping away at the cobwebs wrapped around her. Several layers deep in the soot. I can hardly get my hands through. Still, she keeps lamenting. I went to find him, sure. I saw me big sis. She said they were here. Sure, you can get running. I found what I was looking for. So get running for the beastie. Catch ye. I don't know if something happened, Billy Billy. Uh, or Billy. I've, I have I been calling you Billy Billy this whole time? I'll call you Billy Billy. It's a little nickname for you. I don't know what happened, but I feel like I understand you a lot better now. I, I don't know why. I feel like after all that, we just kind of hit a wavelength together. I just want to save you. Frustration gives me new strength as I give the car was a good yank. Billy comes free. Too weak to stand herself. I catch with all the care I can muster. Parts of her have been eaten away with soot. Ah, oh, Billy. Uh, this is falling from my paws. Falling from her paws are three colorful little marbles. They're made of cheap glass, and one of them is cracked. They're the very same kind as the one I found in the other car. It's a precious thing. I found them. I was playing with them on the dock he shore, but I shot them into the blue. I didn't want Big Sis to get her hearts and knots, so I went to get them, sure. And then I was in this place. That hurt. That... That hurt. To know that's how you went, Billy. It's okay. I'm so happy, sure. They washed back here and I found them. So these were the pearls. They also precious little treasures. Little glass marbles from the corner store. I picked them up and gazed to their gaudy painted swirls. In all this darkness, they looked like the prettiest things in the world. I found myself smiling. Yes, you did. You found them. And you did a wonderful job. I sure. I did me very best. With the rabbit child wrapped up in my arms, I stand up with an impossibly large laugh. It's time to go back. You can't just run away like that. But things can't be so simple. Here in the air slicing two, I roll to the side with Billy in tow. Ouch. That's what I give for playing action hero. She's there again. That monster who wears another face. He's swiping about desperately. Oh, wow, if you press the left stick, you can just immediately save. Didn't know that. I watched horror as the girl I once loved melts before me. All the anger, loneliness, and pain begin to pour through the cracks. Please, just a little while longer. You won't leave me be, right? You're remembering everything. That's what you wanted. You just forward. Her eyes locked on mine, but I give her a good kick before jumping to a corner. I give a good kick. Yeah, think, think, think. I can't just let it in like this. What are you doing? You love me. That's what your heart says. It's crying out for me. 
So come here already. Her cobwebs explode, punching holes in the side of the car. Once tendril comes at us, flying out like a piercing needle. I slam myself into the car, into the floor, and Billy's still at my side. Crash! I look up. I gotta get Billy out of here. A window. In the dark, there's a small square of midnights. The starlight dances off the shattered glass. Sharp. Promising. Billy, hold on tight. The creature shoots for me again. I spring off the floor and in the reckless swing, slam my arm to the remaining glass. Ugh. Yikes, that hurts. But at least it does the job, clearing the rest of the sharp edges. Outside, I can feel the cold wind of space. An escape. Billy, can you get to the top? She's clinging to my clothes, but since the cobwebs have come off, she's gained some color back. Y you can count on me, sure. Good. As best I can, I have Billy out of the window and hopefully up to the roof. Look, the roof of the freaking cosmic train? That's what I'm talking about. She's stronger than she looks. She latches on fast. I got this, sure. Good girl. And now it's time for me. A sharp frigid something stabs into my leg. I'm pinned to the ground. I force stare again into the eyes, into the face of that thing. The features I knew have mutated. The voice that I love is twisted. But my feelings of affection have been overtaken by unbearable pain. You rats. You think you can just run and leave me all alone? You're not her. She's still out there. It doesn't matter. I want you with me. I can't. I have to go now. Stop it. Don't say that. Let me take a bite. It's a small one. Don't be selfish. Don't be a coward. It all comes bubbling to the surface. I'm... No. Coward. Her swirling face morphs into one of shock as I wrap my hands around the sharp of, shard of darkness and pull. Ah! Uh, you! It comes out with great effort. Freedom hurts like crazy. Oh, no, no, no. The adrenaline that kicks in drowns out the pain, pulling me back up with the madman's determination. I won't be taken over. I won't be afraid of the dark. And the darkness doesn't follow me as I climb out the window and onto the roof of the train. <sighs> 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 I sprawl myself out on the roof. Action hero, I am not. Ah, everything hurts. Lee runs up to greet me. Her slit spots have worn away and she's looking much better. Sure, it's the beastie gone. It's... I'm not sure. It got me good. She pats me on my weary head. It's alright, sure. It ain't emascul emasculated to get... To get got good. Thank you. Very much. I really sit up, resting against my bruised elbow. It's marvelous out. The shining flecks of starlight dotting the deep blue sky. The crisp wind splashing me awake with chills. I can almost forget about the side, about the stabbing pain in, my, in the side of my leg. Are you sure? You ought to be hospitalized with that. It's fine. For now, at least. We just need to walk out, to walk our uh, way from here to the other end of the train and we'll be safe. That cat sure will be a notch one bunch, won't she? Oh, crap. Sorry, I went out for a bit. Oh, I bet he will. Shakily, I try to right myself. My leg gives way. That isn't good. It's not just some simple wound. My leg is actually severely hurt. Darkness stain. Oh, Jesus. I didn't know. Actually, I thought it was like a scratch. Darkness stains the spot. It looks to me with great concern. <laughs> Are you doing Roshi sure? I think so, but you'll need to help me a bit, won't you? A brave soldier salutes again, and behind her is a simmering pool of soots. Oh, frick. Look out! Instead of dodging safety, Billy stands in front of me like a noble knight. She shakes ever so slightly at the, as the familiar figure of horror rises from the pool. She twists and twirls in what looks like immense weariness. She looks down at us with a crooked smile. You're forgetting something. In her hands are two shining silver tickets. They're ours, our only way off this train. She waves them around the tugging wind. You're acting so brave, but listen to Big Sis, all right? Let these tickets, you're lost. Calm down, stay with Big Sis. We don't have to fight like this, all right? Still, Billy holds fast. Some talking about Billy. Big Sis would never speak like that. That's what I'm talking about, Billy. She gazes up at the beast with fierce watery eyes, and the monster stares back. I try to think we have nowhere to run. At this point, I can't get back my ticket. I can't save Billy. I can't. I'm struck by the smell of booze and smoke. Freaking the homie? The slam from roof cover far back in a low grunting noise. Squinting, I can spot a small figure. No, a large one arising from the hatch. 
It straightens up, and I can see it has a long coat floating in the space wind. That's... Huffy! I feel the, th the familiar figure clad in horns advanced at a terrifying pace. He wears a truly devilish grin. Well, howdy do, chickadee. A little bird told me there were trouble on these rails, and I thought I'd take a look. That gleeful saber he flies forward, swinging his massive fist at the silk creature who just barely dodges. Huffy! <laughs> Frog, fog face, nice to see ya. Not that the circumstances are so pleasant, I'd say. Hey, beastie. He walks over to the silk creature who shivers in fear. Oh, frick yeah, Huffy! Let's go! He towers over menacingly. No, you got two of something that my friends here have a need for. That puts us on less than peachy terms. Your, your heart! The creature looks truly fearful. Her figure shakes in fusion. The feature, the features move in all powers. He doesn't love anybody. <laughs> he, she can't. It doesn't work on him. <laughs> There's nothing in it. How can that be? Oh come on, darling. You're keeping our powers all cold. Why you look twice as cold as they do? Shiver, shiver, shiver. That's no way to be. So that's light. The terrified creature shoots a needle of darkness up his head. It's no use. He grabs it. I see now. You want to get a little warmed up. He reaches forward with his other arm, squeezes the hand that grips the silver tickets. Tendrils begin to wrap around Huffy, but doesn't he doesn't seem to care. He rips th through them with a smile. This man was a demon when he was alive. He just got stronger when he died. The creature grows, but it only seems to make that devil stronger. Nice! No, I thought I'd make a change for the better on this nice little train. But everyone here is too sweet for their own good. Too many sweets can make a man real rotten. You know, and I'd say you're pretty rotten too. Huffy holds the monster's hand tight in a vice-like grip. I'm so hyped. I'm just I'm like, I'm like jumping up and down my chair. This face is close to hers, burning with madness. They almost look like they're doing some sort of twisted waltz. And they could do like they're dancing in a disturbing way. He swings them dangerously close to the edge. So let's take a rotten honeymoon, you and I. I've got a thing for romance. And with a mighty swoop, he sends them both flying off the side. Suddenly, everyone, everything becomes quiet. I can still hear his theme song. <laughs> the shotgun scene has petrified us both. Sh sure. W sure. What did I see? I'm not really sure, to be honest. I think we just saw the most dangerous man in the world sacrifice his life because I simply shared a drink with him. I want to look over the side out of morbid curiosity, but the fear of being the slip beast again keeps me in my seat. Maybe it's the fear of seeing that devil too. He was unlike anything. He really saved us. I... A hero he was. Hey, don't go writing me off yet. Holy frick! You grabbed on? Two massive hands have an iron grip on the train side. And one of those hands is a pair of sparkling silver tickets. <laughs> Why are you doing this for me? Is it really just because we shared a drink? Oh, Huffy, thank you, thank you. Sure, sure. Just help a fellow out, won't you? I'm dangling in the wind here. Oh, sorry. Get him, get him up. Should I ignore the pain shooting my leg? I pull myself to the edge to help him up. Really, he hardly needs my help at all. He's got the strength to pull himself up and then some. I suspect this is some kind of show thing. Show off thing. Huffy stands proudly on the train top as if nothing happened at all. The knife. What a foul beastie that was. Put some kick in my evening, alright. She nearly put an end to us. Several times. She about eaten me, devil mister. Oh, gobbled you up, huh? Sounds rough. I, no mister. I ought to be finishly compensated. Finished compensated. Oh, I know a thing or two about financial compensation. <laughs> Looks like Huffy has a soft spot for kids, maybe, because he knows exactly what she's saying somehow. <laughs> don't teach her any of your dangerous stuff. It's alright, Fogface. I'm just playing. The beastie sure gave you a rotten time. Sounds like sitting off this train was the easy street for them. That was easy street? What's the hard way? How oh, Billy doesn't pick this kind of thing up. Interrupting my worry, Huffy hands us both our tickets. And so hard to have such a precious thing in my hand again. It's silver dust and it's surprising weight. It's mine. At last. And it's safe. Th thank you. So much. Hey, Fogface. Don't get wishy-washy on me now. It's just a little slip. That's all. I know. I know. I was just looking for it so long. 
I thought I'd be stuck here forever. But now I don't need to worry. I was so lost in thought, I didn't see Huffy walking off without me. His voice cuts to the powerful wind. We'll have plenty of time for conversating when we get ourselves some gin. And off he goes. I should go too, even if my leg hurts. Billy totters up with admirable determination. I be your crutch, sir. <laughs> A strong source. I love you, Billy. <laughs> Thank you, Billy. I can really count on you. The sky is glittering and beautiful. And thankfully, the night is quiet. Final hour toward eternity. We're coming in toward. I think this is the end now for sure. The car is empty for us when we arrive. The translucent people seem to have already made their stops. I hope they find whatever they're looking for. Doppler stands at attention, avoiding all eye contact. That's for the best in the end. At least he's not mad. I like to think in some way he understands why. He probably is trying to control his urge to throw me off the tracks. <laughs> my suitcase is here, miraculously. The remains of my luggage are tucked inside. Huffy, did, did you do this? He gives me an innocent look. Like that ever work. Gosh, she says into me, little girl. I just don't know how I'd get here. Good thing it is, because you get real wishy-washy without it. My guy just confuses me. I'm sure he's got some decency in him, but then he starts teaching Billy how to flip around a butterfly knife. <laughs> I saw Valeria's cut starts when Doppler gives him the side eye. Looks to be in the oh, that looks to be in the line for old Huffy. He grins and offers a handshake. His grin is downright diabolical. <laughs> I shake his hand anyhow. Thank you for saving us. He shakes his head. Real sweet of you, but I'd never known if it weren't for that little birdie. Let's ask what he means when he breaks off and waves nonchalantly. It's his time to go. He gives a nod to our attendant for opening the door, and he's gone. It's not too long until it's Billy stop. We don't make any conversation. So she snoozes on my leg. Huffy wore her out with all this awe talk. I don't want to admit it, but I've got a pool of anxiety sitting in my chest. This is coming from the start. It doesn't stop my heart from breaking. Doppler doesn't have to tell me anything. Gently, I pat the drooling child awake. Come on, dear. It's time to go now. Her eyes flutter open and her whole face is covered with snot. Aye, it's time to go. She lets herself down from the seat and wipes her eyes awake. After the events of night, it's a wonder she can even stand. Sure, oh, Jesus. Sure. I can hardly hear her through the sleepy mumbles I've been down, so I've been down here. Sure. Don't be so cheerful. Excuse me? Cheerful, sure. Your hearts be crying cheers. She yawns and gives me a big snot-filled smile. You don't worry about me, sure. I'm going to be just and rosy. Just rosy. If you say so. Bye-bye, sure. Yes. I managed. A bit shaken than I'd attended. Goodbye, Billy. She totters up to the side of the door in a sleepy haze. Just as sudden as she first appeared, she's gone. And now I'm all alone. Well, Doppler's here as well, but I'd hardly call him good company. I think I've gained a strange fondness of him despite the bitter spats of assaulting him from behind with a bottle. That sounds horrible. So we're hitting him in the head with a bottle. We waited so stoically for the next stop as the flickering stars outside passes by. It's all down to waiting. Say, Doppler. He flicks his ear dismissively. Hey! Doppler! What do you want, meow? Value posture. sure. And I must feel the heat from his secrets, from his secrets seething through rage from my seat. But I guess he's got to maintain some level of professionalism while on the job, huh? Doppler, are you alive? Quite so, passenger. Why, sir, are you jealous? I would be lying to say no, but I'm not terribly bothered either. <laughs> it's a nine year acting slick, hmm. There's a lot of I wish I did when I was alive. Because the thought of it all ended, because the thought of it all ending had never occurred to me. I held so much back. I was on my way with these rings, too. To propose, right? I heard that story a million times. Golly, I should have told her I loved her. You were going to say that, weren't you? <laughs> well, why shouldn't I say that? It's a nice thing to say. Oh, so you're a nice guy now, huh? You should have tried being nice for you gave me a concussion. Sometimes violence is necessary. You were just being a dumb I mean, gosh, value passenger. What a unique perspective. <laughs> The cat just rubs me the wrong way. You know, he's definitely in the right here. 
Thank heavens, it sounds like your stop is coming soon. Outside the window, there's an intense light coming into view. It outshines the rest of the stars. As if reading my thoughts, Doppler growls with mild irritation. Yes, that's your stop. I have not a clue what happens after you, so don't ask me. I see. There's nobody here to see me off. My anxiety grows. There's really no point to it, but I can't help myself. Huffy's words suddenly come to mind. A little birdie told me. A little birdie, a little birdie. The image of feathers and pleasant smile popped into my head. Shaheen, oh! Dapper, I'll be right back. Hey, hey pause your, you can't just leave now. Your stop is the next one. I've got to say goodbye to somebody. I stand up quickly, got my suitcase and rush to the next car. The idiot, all the other passengers are gone. Shaheen, Shaheen, in my own troubles, I'd nearly forgotten you. You helped save us. And for that, I have to say thank you. Your stop is nearly here. That's good. I take it you've come for a present as well? It's the back of the train as Shaheen leans out on the railing, set against a backdrop of nothing but stars. Peeking through a window really doesn't do it justice. The galaxy is bigger than I can imagine. The view never gets old. I'd like to look at it forever. Unfortunately, time keeps taking, even from the dead. Sh Shaheen, about before, I'm cut off. He raises his hands and produces a stack of silver-lined cars. The wind threatens to take them, but his grip is fierce. As a present to you, brave soul, I'd like to finish out his card reading. The fortunes? Absolutely. Some say the afterlife is but a way to be reborn. So I'm telling this fortune you might learn about your next life. <laughs> no guarantees, but it is a nice thing to muse about. I could tell he doesn't want to speak about what happened before. He puts the stack towards me. Don't think too much. Pick any you like. Feather boy grins without showing me the contents of the car. Please understand, that ruins the fortune. The hangman. Ah, please don't make that face. It's impressive, actually. It sounds dire, doesn't it? But the hangman can be a sign of release. The burdens of your past life will be released within the next. It's a blessing. Shuffles the deck, cuts in half, and pushes it to me again. Another time, please. Without looking, I pick a card and hand it to Shaheen. Looks over it for a long time. Is it alright? Don't worry. It's a good card. It's a card of lovers. There's a pang in my heart. Even until death, it seems like you still have your ties. Even if you are gone now, she will still think of you and your kindness. Your faults. Your well-meaning fumbles. It is an enviable, enviable position to be in, is it not? To have such unconditional warmth. Thank you, Shaheen. Please don't make that face. Guilt is troubling. It always manages to sour the best of men. I feel like there was so much more I could have done to make her know, you know? Shaheen mused over my complaints. Upon being reborn, you will be tied by something. Somebody out there is destined to meet you. Somebody who understands you deeply. Find the apple of your eye and eat well for as long as you live, you know? So, so, that means in the next life, you'll find her again. And you have a little bit more time to show her how you feel. It's a truly good card. And with that, he shuffles the deck. So he gives me a tight smile and returns the card into his pocket. Really, it all seems too good to be true. I think he knows this as well. Thank you, Shaheen. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. The train begins to slow. My time, my stop has come. I'm here with the bout of nervousness. I'm thinking of Shaheen's fortune. Maybe it's not so bad. Ah, that's it. The great unknown is scary, but the thought that the future holds something good eases my mind. Yes, there must be something good. Even if I can't see it now, it's there. And waiting for me. You seem to be in good spirits. My shoulders feel lighter now. I must say, you are a talented conversationalist. I'm just doing what I can. I think this is where we part. I have to stay a little longer. I'm sure Doppler would come growling for me with his whiskers on and an idea crosses my mind. I know. I'll give you something back. I'm met with amusement. No, really. It won't be much, but while we're feeling sentimental, something realize that I haven't got anything to give him. I do have the wedding rings. That would be a seriously odd scene. But if I don't need them, I don't want to part with them either. Something else. Something good. Are you doing alright? 
I'm just thinking. My instinctively goes up the pinch the bridge of my nose, except I haven't got one. Oh, that's it. Yo, the mask. Here, my friend. Well, there's no point having this anymore. Oh? It's not an orthodox gift, but it's something to remember me by. I took the mask on my face and placed it to the boy's hands. He looks shocked. Oh, but how good does this feel? With the mask on, I can feel the coolness of the space when it gets me, and I take a deep breath in. Ah, uh, your hurt face. Yes, it's foggy, I know. Suddenly, it's a bit hard to see. I just want to stick to my pocket and place them on my face. If it's snugly on the bridge of my nose. Nose. My n oh, nose. Wait, I'd been speaking just then, hadn't I? Words coming from... I don't need it anymore. Oh! The feeling of being a hole. My face has become whole. I don't need it anymore. It's back. It's all back. How good it feels to finally be intact. It's like coming home after a long trip. I can't help but pinch my own cheek. Ow! <laughs> yep, it's definitely real. Shane goes straight to laughing at me. <laughs> what? Do I look funny? <laughs> no. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> I want to give him a good whap on the head. Enough of your emotional, you seem to act so childish. It's funny to see someone your age shouting like that. I can't tell if you're complimenting me or not. Shaheen grins and pulls a mask to his chest. But thank you for the gift. It'll help me think of you. Of course. And when you reach us and when you reach our stop, maybe you can give it to someone new. That's a nice idea, certainly. Oh, he's doing that thing again. Puts a fan firm on his shoulder. He looks a bit shocked. You will reach your stop. Thank you for saying that. You will. I don't know how, but you will. I mean, I was some bumbling idiot without a thought in my head and I made it. Look, you're so young. There's a whole world out there. And, um, I just don't want you to, to I, don't want, I don't want to leave thinking you've given up hope. Ah, I'm an idiot. What was I even saying? I don't know what I'm talking about. Why don't I just dive off the railing into a black hole already? Shane has some kind of seriousness on his face. I can't believe it for myself. I never realized this now, until now, but Shane, I see what you mean by a little birdie. It's like kind of like a bird chest thing going here. Never realized that until now. But you, a complete bumbling fool. Hey, a uh, fool like you did his best and won. And now that fool believes in me. I can't help it. My mind is against it, but my heart is saying, trust him. You won me over with your eloquent speech. Shaheen, all this time I've been waiting to give you a good whack over the head. He laughs. It's unburdened by bitterness and worry. It's the sound that I wanted to hear. There's much more I want to ask him, about much more I want to say. But leaving him with a smile will be good enough for me. Breaking the moment is a shrill growl from the front. Heaven so help you, Foggy, if you miss your stop. I can't leave him waiting too long or send me to a whole other afterlife. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. Say Shaheen. When I glance back, he's gone. It's a bit disappointing, but the gift is gone as well. I suppose he's bad with goodbyes. But in the end, I won, didn't I? Yeah. I'm a winner. A bumbling fool for winter. A winner. Winter, said. So. Thank you. And take care of yourself. Pick up my suitcase, adjust my hat, and exit the car for the last time. I stare at the door with some unidentifiable feeling rushing up within me. Doppler stands by, thankfully silent, with his eyes traveling across the old seats and washed out rugs, and attempt to ignore my existence, or maybe just give me space. Either one is alright with me. We sit in stoic silence. Maybe I'll miss this train. I know I can't. Not really. I'm sure I'll forget everything as soon as I get off. Not all the memories are so rosy. But glistening, glinting ceilings, the dusty bar counter, the gentle chug of the train itself. It was nice while it lasted. It was so nice. And that view was unlike anything. All too soon, the soothing train chug dies off into the silence. All I have left is the sound of my own pounding heart. Is this it? I ask. And it comes out in almost a whimper. The outside is too brilliant for words. So brilliant, in fact. Delbert doesn't bother with them. He simply punches my ticket and grunts in his usual tired fashion. His face, in his tired fashion, his face is enough. The time is up. Light by the door is so strong it's pushed. It, it's pushed its way into the car and created jewel-like spatterings across the floor. 
Some of them seem to dance as if the rays themselves were living. I don't want to be afraid. I don't want to be afraid. Behind this door is the slightest scent of lilac. There's light and birds and lilacs. There's a world of the unknown. Somewhere in this vast space, there's a thousand glittering little stars. And somewhere in the dark, I found myself again. I place my hand on the door and push. Goodbye, everyone. Oh my god! That game. It's not a story by Kenji Miyazawa. <sighs> I like to let the credits play out without me speaking because I don't want to talk over. I just want to appreciate all the stuff that I was using this game really quick. So just appreciate that. And you can hear my thoughts after. Oh my God. No, right. It's a small team. Very small of thing. It was mostly. It's pretty much just one person that does this game for the most part. Uh, oh, special thanks to you. So I didn't really have to say too much. Goblin with the problem. Gubbles. Randelver. Delv. Devliper. Devliper? Yeah, something like that. Very small. Uh, it's not like a big team that makes these games. Like, as you can see, barely anybody was there. The credits were a solid 10 seconds, <laughs> which is really just shows how impressive this stuff is that they can make such riveting storytelling. Oh. And that, my friend, is how I'm in. How it ends. Quite satisfied with that one. Got a bit sappy in places, but it's all in good spirit, you know. I prefer stories with some hope in them. The dead departed and those who do not who did not are left with warm memories. Thank you very much for playing. Farewell, passenger. Let's tell another story another time. Oh Yeah, I should have noticed. Yeah, like he has bird stuff here, bird stuff here. I don't know how I didn't notice that. But that is Oh, we can get a little let's read a little stuff. Uh, fog face <laughs> the passenger so that we never got our character's name if you know that throughout the whole game he said he remembered everything but he did not say his name throughout the whole game saddest part of dead likes the ocean dislikes pain cats special skill misplaced his glasses romantically minded young man with more than his fair share of bad luck he's bumbling but hopeful the kind of cry at the end of the movies when he was alive he didn't make a lot of money for this entire story in fact he was walking around with socks full of hoes so we can afford some nice one if he gets free board jesus Part of dead likes talking, fighting, dislikes nothing much. Special skill, dancing. Surprisingly friendly, devil of a man. Nothing seems to bother him, so he gets along with a lot of people. He was an assassin when he was alive. Though he started his killer habits from the orphanage he grew up was burnt down. He saw revenge and grew to love the throws. Shaheen, dead departed. Likes festival and seas, dislikes being alone. Special career, playing ten bird. Sensitive, mysterious young youth who was on the, been on the roads for a long time. He's actually a stowaway. Having got his ticket stolen early on, he now tries to comfort new souls. When Shaheen was alive, he traveled with his father selling handmade jewelry from his village. He misses his father's stories by the fire the most of all. Like spinach shiny things, just like barnacles. Special care parroting, special skill parroting adult talk, I suppose so. A totter, tottering, blathering rabbit child. She's a bit eccentric, but always in good spirits because of her high emotional intelligence. She understands the situation right away. She was alive, Billy played along the docks while her parents were fishing. She got all sorts of sweets from the foul mouth sailor men at the local inn. One thing here is actually not here. That's something that we must have missed because we, I, that was a true ending we got. So I guess there was something, another ending where you could have met somebody else. Guiding lights, that's alive. Likes and change stories, just like uptight folks. So let's just go note taking. And the light who guides is a light who guides. Not much can be said about them. They enjoy watching you play through the story. Now let's find something else to keep them busy. Vivian, suit monster. That was the name. Tainted dead. Likes kind people. Dislikes herself. This was getting a normal shy girl felt a terrible fate. Lost her ticket and a fear of disappearing took a dangerous medicine to save herself. It morphed her into a lonely monster who must eat the memories and bodies of others who survives. She was alive. Vivian was extremely reserved, but enjoyed seeking when she was alone. Oh. Even her fate was a sad one. Sad is alive, Doppler, Neko man. Likes payday, just like cigarettes, alcohol, the ocean, bad weather, paperwork, the bureau. <laughs> Let's go gambling. An impudent feline who would like a pay raise. Nobody knows how he got into this business, but rumors say he's got money problems with the mafia. Others say it's a death from a nasty divorce. The truth is that it's none of your dang business. <laughs> oh my God. To say simply, this game was absolutely freaking incredible. Like there's, there's nothing In the end, in the story I'm reading, a man has lost his true love. 
makes a deal with the gods to bring her back from the depths. Obviously, there's conditions. You can't look at her or the entire thing will fall apart. Gods are cruel like that, I think. But this story doesn't end the way you would think. It's not her that crumbles, but him. He turns to take in her beauty right before the exit, and he I've heard the story, it hurts. And right before the exit, and he blows away like a pillar of dust. But it's different. His love is left right on the blink, mourning him in the window of life from the outside world. Ridiculous story. It doesn't make any sense. Why did he make such a reckless decision? Why doesn't she just leave already? And more importantly, why won't this old man stop staring at me? Hide behind the pages of my book. He was staring an uh, unconcerned smile, sitting on his wrinkled face for this whole trip. He hasn't moved or said anything. He just sits, smiles, and stares. Who could we possibly be so enamored with? Is there the Mona Lisa behind me? Oh, what a beautiful sight indeed. The old man's voice comes out dripping in sentimentality. I try to ignore him. The book is already finished, but I flip back to the beginning to keep myself occupied. Missy, have you been this way before? No, oh, no, he spoke to me directly. I wish I could sink into the cushion my seat disappear. I'm not exactly in the mood for socializing. The old man looks at me. That must mean he wants me to respond. My throat goes dry. Once in the past. Oh, then you know, you must know all the beautiful sights then. I didn't have much time to enjoy it. In so long as I've been bothered to talk to anyone. I didn't try to call for it, but still. Kind people with their sweet words make my stomach turn. That's a shame. How unfortunate that sour memories contain such shining things. He's still talking. What does he want now? Even that small exchange was exhausting me for the day. People keep treating me like a fragile doll. The voices come out different, their faces go soft. It's like I've been transported to a different world entirely. Just leave me alone. And that's how I met my first wife. Oh gosh, he was talking this whole time? He makes that face that he wants... That means he wants me to respond, I think. Except I really wasn't listening. My throat won't work. His face changes again. He's only looking at me for an answer. And he's focusing past me. Oh, we're about to go through the mountain. Ah, <sighs> I wish to look for a while longer. Is this our fog face reborn? I turn to look. It's the ocean. That's all. The sky is overcast and the beach looks like it would be irritating to walk on. There's probably too much wind. The scene gets smaller and smaller, and all at once we're overtaken by the darkness of the mountain tunnel. The ocean is reduced to a speck. The speck is swallowed by light, and the light is in turn stamped out by the dark. I sink back down into my seat, the old man making a soft, sad noise. I open my book again, but it's difficult to make out the words suddenly. Ridiculous. Hmm? The letters on the page are obscured by darkness, and even more so with tears. How ridiculous. How stupid. Why? Why did he make up such a reckless decision? Doesn't he know she loves him anyway? Why is she still crying over it? There's nothing she could do. It wasn't anybody's fault, but I still... I still... I have cried in so long. The tears that are building up spill out, my heart beating out of control. The old man must be horrified right now. This ugly crying, these bitter words, it's so ugly. The tunnel won't be for long, Missy. What a very matter-of-fact statement. His words are gentle, but not in the way that everyone else is. Gentle is as if, he, as if he's simply speaking quieter. After some time, my sobs run themselves dry and I'm left with weak hiccups. Sorry. No, oh, there's nothing to apologize for. That view must have brought some painful memories back. Painful memories. It's been years so I thought I'd be able to move on just fine. I just couldn't imagine what it would be like without him. I couldn't imagine what it would do to me. So this is her. His lover. A simple view can bring me to tears. Is that how it works? That's the kind of thing from movies. Whatever I go, I'm reminded somehow. In small ways. In innocent, simple things. The darkness of the tunnel is broken up by a small window of light. There it is. It wasn't so long, was it? Let's wait a little longer. Then we could see more wonderful views. I sniff and brush the hair away from my wet face. My heart, painful in my chest, calms down with every breath. In the dark, I wait. Wow, that was... Traveler, someone's beloved. That's alive, likes reading, walking, just like who she doesn't know. Skill bargain hunting. The lover of fog face. She acts quite distant at times, but around certain people she can't help but go soft. Very focused individual. She met Fogface when he lost his glasses. It turns out they were in his coat pocket the whole time. His embarrassed laughter stole her heart. That's beautiful, man. You can tell the difference of uh, how they look, obviously. 
I was a traveler. I wonder if that was fog face reincarnated. Oh, that hurt. That hurts so much more. <laughs> oh, God, God, I have tears in my eyes. I'm going to get emotional now. Come on. You can't do that. Man. Thank you guys so much for watching. This game is all like, obviously, I have to say this game is so freaking beautiful. The character design is storyteller for just like such a small. I don't even know if it's a group or just one guy, but I think it might just be one guy. Such a small, just indie thing. It's so amazing. The storytelling, I feel like, and, you know, and it's fairly kind of a normal story about being lost on a train and like not really you're dead. It, like, that's pretty normal, but it's just the way it was done. And the characters, like everyone was really likable. Even a uh, freaking Huffy, the normal serial killer assassin like he was even likable it was just such a good way of storytelling that i i just loved it all the way through i love doing the silly voices that i was doing uh and stuff like that as i always am it's nice to get a little close off thing there that was really nice to kind of see the final thing and this say we had the card of the lover so they would meet again regardless which is really beautiful i'm glad i played this game a lot and this is actually a prequel there's the other, I said at the beginning, there is another game after this. I can't remember the name now because I've been just so enamored with the source language of this one. But this is a prequel. There is another game that we are going to play soon after this one. I don't know if it's going to follow. It's probably not going to follow the same characters. We might see Shaheen, maybe. But everyone else is gone. So we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm just going to have a different type of thing because we already know the plot of this now, pretty much. But I'm excited for the sequel thing because uh, I'm just excited to see how that turns out. Because I absolutely love the experience of this game. This game is incredible. And just thank you for watching. Thank the thank you the developer. This is, as I said, the same developer that made Reapers um, Goodbye. And they just make incredible games, I see. <sighs> yeah, thank you. I love this game. This game was incredible in every way. And I'm so glad I played it. And thank you so much for watching it. I really do hope you enjoyed it as well. These games are really beautiful just to sit through and relax. Um, and I appreciate you watching. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Farewell.